Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous video, we saw the curves to the quantum mechanic oscillator. For, well, is that how I want to say it? Electron line. Mm. In the previous video, we saw the solution, the functions to the Schrodinger equation that describe the. What does it describe? <laughs> no, they're not the probability density functions. They. Um, Ah, <laughs> yes, they're called wave functions. Okay, ready? Go. The, the way to mathematically, uh, still, I'm not still not, uh, hang on, hang on, I've, I've lost. That then the, was able to represent these functions. Uh, uh, I'm not saying it right. I'm not, it's not coming out. Let me try again. Let me try again. So the question is, what are those? Well, it turns out that these are operators that allow us to find the solution. Well, I don't know what those things are. Come on, give me a break. Ah, yay, yay. And don't you dare put that thought there. Uh. Welcome to the lecture online. In the previous video, we were trying to figure out how to best represent the solutions to the Schrodinger equation that describes the quantum mechanic oscillator. And here was the equation we came up with. We had a constant that needed to be normalized, the function e to the minus m omega x squared over 2h bar that related the spring constant to the oscillatory motion, and then we had the Hermitian operator. The product of these three would then define the solution to the Schrodinger equation for the harmonic oscillator. We also saw in a previous video the general shape that we were trying to find that also best describe the quantum mechanic wave function. Now, when we combine these two and we're trying to figure out how to best represent the mathematical equation of the solution of the Schrodinger equation, we found that the Hermitian operator is the one that could do it. Because if you take a look at the graphical representation of the Hermitian operator, you will see the same kind of functions except this one is upside down perhaps, but you can see that this looks exactly like this. This function right here looks exactly like this function. So you can see that with the Hermitian operator and this exponential decay function, we're able to take this type of graph and make it into this kind of graph. Now, all we need to do is figure out how to come up with the Hermitian operators. Well, here are the equations that define how to how to define or how to derive those equations. We have two types. We have what we call the probabili probabilitists, that's very difficult to pronounce, and the physicist Hermite polynomials. They're basically the same with a slight difference that one is kind of a factor of the other. So notice that we can get the physicist Hermite polynomials by taking the probabilitist Hermite polynomials, multiplying it times two to the n over two, and then taking the function of the square root of 2 of x instead of just the, the function of x. And then you can see that you get virtually the same result. What's best for what we're trying to do here with the harmonic oscillator, we're going to take the physicist Hermite polynomials. And the way they're calculated is you simply take minus 1 to the n power, of course, n means for all the various quantum mechanic um, energy levels that we're looking for, times e to the x squared, and then the nth derivative with respect to x of e to the minus x squared. If we then operate on the various functions, we can then see that these are the results that we get for n equals 0, n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4, and so forth. So, for example, for the n equals 2, we get 4x squared minus 2, and that would then go right here, except for one more change, Instead of having it as a function of x, we really want it for a function of the square root of m omega over h bar times x. Again, we need to relate it to the physical characteristics of the oscillator. So all we need to do then is simply replace every x by the square root of m omega over h bar times x. So if we have an x squared, of course, then we're going to multiply this or simply square this quantity right here to get 4 times this quantity squared, x squared minus 2, and so forth. So simply all we're doing is replacing every x that we have in the equation by x times the square root of m omega over h bar. And so essentially, when we then 
find the solution for n equals zero. We get this constant right here, which is going to normalize the exponential function that then brings the function down to the x-axis when we go to a large, uh, large x-value, and then the her Hermotion, Hermitian polynomial that will then give us the proper curve depending upon what energy level we are in the oscillator or you, what quantum number we're using for the oscillator. So for quantum number n equals zero, we get one for the Hermitian uh, operator, or basically I should go over here. For n equals one, we get this as a Hermitian operator. For n equals two, we get this. For n equals three, we get this and so forth. In the next video, I'll show you how to actually calculate these polynomials from our equation up here. Then all we need to do is multiply the Hermitian polynomial for the particular quantum state, multiplying times the exponential function, and then normalize the function to get the proper C sub n for each quantum state as well. I know that at this point it probably doesn't make a lot of sense yet, but on the next video when I show you how to actually derive these polynomials, and then we'll show you how to normalize the function, we then will get a complete, a complete set of solutions for the quantum mechanic oscillator. And yes, it's not easy to get there, but with a few more videos, we'll eventually, we'll get there. So stay tuned, and eventually this will all make sense.